Okay, I think we'll kick this off. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on the new UCD MSc in cybersecurity. And in a moment, I'm going to hand over to the course director, Dr. Liliana Pasquale, who is a lecturer and assistant professor in the UCD School of Computer Science. <clears throat> Following Liliana, we're very pleased to have three of the lecturers from the course to talk about their modules briefly. From the School of Computer Science, we have Professor Joe Carthy and Associate Professor Dr. Mark Scanlon. And from the Southern School of Law at UCD, Dr. TJ McIntyre, who is an Associate Professor and Head of Teaching and Learning there. So we plan to run for, I think, around 45 minutes. Please put any questions you might have in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to get them towards the end. So um, for now, I'd like to just hand over to Liliana to give you an overview of the course. Thank you, Rupert. I'm just sharing my screen. I hope you can see it correctly. Yeah, looks good, I can see so, MSC in cybersecurity. Yes, thank you for the introduction and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Liliana Pasquale. As Rupert said, I'm the director of the Master in Cybersecurity. And uh, my interest, uh, research interests are in software engineering and security. And I'm going to spend a few words about the Master now. So first of all, what is the motivation be behind this new program? So the main motivation is that there is a growing cybersecurity market globally, and cybersecurity is recognized as critical for national security and the smooth functioning of society. So for this reason, uh, the, there will be a cybersecurity skills shortage. So uh, there are currently about 435,000 cybersecurity job openings available in US compared to Three, over 300,000 in 2019. And this phenomenon is gonna increase over time. So uh, our objective is to prepare IT professionals, so people who already have a role uh, in IT, uh, to take up a managerial or a technical career in cybersecurity. So, and we also uh, have the aim to help companies, government and state institutions, defense forces, and the other organization to upskill their staff to fill new roles in cybersecurity. So what is the vision uh, behind the program? So uh, our vision is based on two main principles. The first principle is to deliver high quality cybersecurity training and formal education. And to do that, we basically um, try to align as much as possible the curriculum to the ACM IEEE AIS IFIP cybersecurity curricular guidelines. So uh, these curricular guidelines were formulated by a joint task force uh, with the security expert with the purpose of uh, developing a comprehensive, comprehensive curricular guidelines in cybersecurity education. So the other aspect is that uh, we try to uh, focus on uh, teaching cutting edge cybersecurity knowledge strategies and techniques uh, to understand and tackle emerging trends in cybercrime. And we will also offer uh, a module on research trends in cybersecurity. Also, uh, another uh, new aspect in the program is to offer students the possibility of undertaking a significant piece of research or a professional project. And uh, to do that, we have recruited uh, uh, not just uh, uh, cybersecurity research expert, uh, expert, but also industry practitioner as adjunct faculty. So the second principle uh, uh, of the master in cybersecurity is to facilitate part-time learners because we expect students to have a full-time job. And to do that, uh, we will offer online pre-recorded lectures. However, we want to also foster uh, live interaction. So we will have weekly online live activities outside the core working hours, such as Q&As, quizzes, problem to be solved in groups, discussion. And at the same time, uh, we will have occasional, uh, uh, specifically three, face-to-face -face workshop for each term. 
And, uh, and this workshop will be aimed to, to foster and encourage networking uh, and uh, teamwork between uh, students. So the idea is that uh, when you graduate, you will not just have a set of skills, but you will also have a network of, contact, of contacts that, uh, for the future. Uh, so what are the now the selected program outcomes of, of these modules? So uh, I have divided these uh, outcomes uh, in three dimensions, the knowledge, the skills, abilities, and the being. So we all also want to foster a change in the attitude of the students. So starting with the knowledge, these are a, only a set of selected uh, program outcomes. So we want students to demonstrate deep knowledge of information security principle and protection mechanism, approaches to assess and mitigate risk, and we will explore qualitative and quantitative approaches to uh, assess risks, knowledge of security standards and cybersecurity and data protection regulations. Uh, we will also have a module dedicated uh, to cryptographic protocol uh, and also uh, threats and security controls in networks and software systems. Uh, there are uh, a set of selected uh, program outcomes in the skills dimension. So these are abilities with, that we want the students to develop. So for example, the application of information security concept to the design and implementation of, of networked or software or distributed system technologies, uh, the ability to perform risk assessment, management and mitigation to secure, for example, infrastructure and operation, uh, being able also to track strategic threats and maintain situation awareness. Um, also being able to identify security law, laws that applies to complex organization and apply protection measures to comply with these laws. And also evaluate a thread off between security, regulation, business, economic and management principles. Uh, we will have also a module focusing on incident response. So we want students to be able to apply appropriate incident response principle and methodologies to secure infrastructure and operation. And also to demonstrate advanced knowledge and uh, to be able to uh, 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 of cryptography, security trends and technologies in order to address industry and research problems. So we want students to be able to use the knowledge they acquire to uh, tackle the research problems at the end of the program. And finally, we have some uh, outcomes in the being dimension. So we want our students to be able to communicate security risk and mitigation strategies to executives uh, because some students will take a role, a managerial role in cybersecurity, for example. Being also able to attract and assess security talent is an important skill, especially because more and more companies will need to hire um, cybersecurity experts, and also being able to lead security teams and influence the organizational culture. So um, what are now the assessment strategies that we, we will use? So our model will use a combination of, of end of term exam, but also continuous or end of term assessment. Uh, and continuous assessment is very good practice, especially for um, part-time students. So there will be different type of assessment. Uh, some modules will use journaling activities, uh, practical assignment, which could be programming assignment, for example, penetration testing assignments where students are required to write a report, um, quizzes, uh, essays, uh, or case studies. So these are problems to be solved in groups it requires students to apply the, the knowledge that they acquire during a module, or also group presentations. So these are all a set of assignments that our module will adopt. So let's go now into the details of the, of the program. So what are the modules uh, of this program? So in year one, as you can see here in, the di in this diagram, uh, we will focus on more high level modules that are targeting uh, students who wants to take a career, a managerial career in cybersecurity. So the, these modules are information security, leadership in security, risk assessment and security standards, and cybersecurity law and regulations. So at the end of these uh, two terms, a students can acquire a, will acquire a graduate certificate in cybersecurity. This is mainly targeting, as I was mentioning, 
students uh, who wants to get ready for a managerial and leadership career in cybersecurity. Uh, or whether uh, if the students decide to continue to pursue a diploma or a master, uh, in the summer term, we will have now more technical module, secure software engineering and applied cryptography. So the, the, the module in, in the next term require more technical knowledge of programming, networking, uh, and operating system. So this is what's uh, in uh, uh, the modules for the summer term. And then we we'll have also uh, in year two in the autumn term, we'll have network security and, incident, and the incident response. So after this four term, the four terms, a student can acquire uh, the graduate diploma in cybersecurity, which will prepare a student for a technical career in cybersecurity. Uh, in the last two terms, the students uh, have the option to choose two tracks. Uh, one track uh, is, uh, uh, as you can see here on the top of these slides, uh, uh, so students can choose to uh, attend to enroll in three modules, malware analysis, trend in cybersecurity, and ethical hacking, and then uh, do a case study in the second term. A case study is a problem that requires students to apply the knowledge they acquired during the uh, master, uh, but doesn't require a, an extensive programming assignment or a, a, the production of, of a big uh, software prototype. Instead, uh, if the student choose to uh, enroll in the project track, uh, the student can choose between a professional or a research cybersecurity project. So professional project would be supervised by a, a practitioner and an academic, uh, while a research cybersecurity project will be supervised by a, an academic, a, 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 a member of staff in UCD who is doing research in cybersecurity. So these are extensive projects that uh, require the students to, for example, produce a prototype uh, or uh, a, a, an artifact uh, at, the, at the end to, to solve a, a, a pra practical or research cybersecurity problem. So another uh, important aspect of this master is that it's taught by cybersecurity experts. We have a lot of cybersecurity expertise in UCD, in, in, both in the School of Computer Science and in the School of Law. And uh, uh, it, it, um, one of, of the advantage of doing this master in UCD is that uh, it, we have experts that will teach uh, uh, subjects uh, in, in their uh, research area of expertise. So, for example, I will teach the, uh, I have expertise in security and software engineering. Uh, Professor Joe Carty is a founding director of the UCD Center for Cybersecurity and Cybercrime Investigation, and he has an, has an extensive experience in security. Dr. Mark Scallon um, uh, has an extensive expertise in digital forensic acquisition and analysis. Dr. Felix Balado has an expertise in cryptography. Dr. TJ McIntyre uh, is an expert in IT law and cybercrime. Dr. Madhusan Kaliniaj um, has an extensive expertise in network security. And Dr. Pavel Gladyshev has expertise in malware analysis. Um, we also uh, uh, recruited o Owen O'Connor, uh, who, uh, who is working in cloud operation and security platforms in State Street. So he's an adjunct faculty who will teach the leadership in security module. And in this slide, you can see the fees, and this can also be found online. Uh, and finally, I just want to spend a few words on the eligibility criteria. Uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the master requires students to uh, enroll in techni more technical subjects, okay? So for this reason, uh, the requirements to enroll in the master and in the diploma uh, in cybersecurity uh, are either a minimum of a 2.1 honor specialist degree in computer science or a cognate discipline, or a 2.2 honor bachelor's degree in computer science or a cognate disciplines, plus an equivalent of five year experience at least uh, in software development and software and system security. Instead for the graduate certificate, uh, we require either a minimum of a 2.1 bachel honors bachelor's degree in computer science or a cognate discipline, or uh, a minimum of 2.1 degree from a recognized university, not just computer science, computer science degree, 
plus three years of industry experience in cybersecurity. However, it's worth mentioning that each applicant will be assessed on a case by case basis because um, uh, situation, personal circumstances and experience can vary. And also uh, students are required to fulfill UCD English language requirements. So I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, I'm going to hand over uh, to Professor Giocatti, who is gonna spend a few words uh, about uh, his module, uh, Information Security. Thanks very much, Liliana. I think hopefully that was very clear for everybody. Um, so the module I'm teaching is information security, and it's an introduction to the whole area of in information security and to address the issues that security specialists around the world are, are seeing today. So the goal is to make it very practical. Um, that's an underlying goal of the module. But at the same time, we will be looking at some of the theoretical aspects and we'll be guided by Ross Anderson's security engineering textbook. We'll be using that as a background textbook as well. But at the end, we will hopefully you'll be able to identify the security design issues and implementation issues if you want to design a secure system you'll understand the role of cryptography and security protocols obvious stuff like confidentiality integrity availability will cover access control um, network vulnerabilities and the approaches that different organizations take but a really important point i want to emphasize and i've already said it is that putting what you learn into practice and um, Liliana, Liliana has already mentioned case studies, so a, a key part of this module will be those key studies where we look at real problems and how you address those real problems. And one of the exercises you'll have to do is you'll have to create an information security manual, either for your own organization or for an organization of your choice. And this will be a confidential document, it won't be shared with your peers, because if it's your own organization, you don't want to be sh sharing that kind of information. But again, this will give you um, a lot of experience in how to present information to your senior managers, as Liliana has mentioned already, um, but also to give you a good overview of the security that's relevant to you in your organization. We're going to have quite a bit of group work, but it's not group work as you know what the idea of the group work is for people to share their learning, but it'll be group work where you're graded as an individual. If you've ever carried out group work before in any setting, you realize that we have what you might call slackers, for want of a nicer word, and you have lone stars. So the slacker is the person who hangs on and doesn't do very much work and gets a group grade um, and benefits from it. And the lone star may be the person who does the whole project by themselves and all the other people are, are passengers. And, and neither situation is very good. So the goal of our um, group work will be that you, you learn from each other in the group, but you produce your own individual report and that's what you'll be graded on. So it'll be your own work you'll be graded on. So you don't have to worry about coping with slackers and you don't have to worry about coping with lone stars. And if you're a lone star, you don't have to worry about persuading everybody that you, you're always right, which lone stars are typically always right. Um, so in terms of assessment, then we'll have a learning journal, really a learning portfolio, which will have those case studies in it. We'll have that in, um, information security manual in it. It'll have some questions that you have to answer as well that you'll have to address. And that's the majority of marks, 70% of the marks at least. And then we'll have a small exam to look at some of the things to make sure that you've grasped some of the, the theoretical concepts of the course as well. Uh, it's a 10 credit module and roughly speaking that means it's 200 to 220 hours work. So a five credit module is 100 hours to 120, sorry, and a 10 credit in is double that, sorry, 200 um, to 240 hours work. So that's roughly um, the overall amount of work, but a lot of that work you'll be no doing in your own time. And as part-time students, many people take a whole weekend, a couple of weekends to do that. So it's difficult to say how much work you do week to week. And I think that will vary from student to student. And I see a, a question in the question and answer session there, section about how, how many hours per week. And in, in essence, each student will decide that themselves. Some students will take a few days off to do it. Other students will work on a weekly basis. But when you look at a five credit module, you think of 100 hours work roughly. When you look at a 10 credit module, you think of 100 hours work. And that includes the study, the writing, the reports, the exam, and that, that's the total amount of work involved in the module. So to give you an idea of the workload involved. Um, I think I've covered all my bases there. Obviously, we'll have a Q&A after this. And please feel free to come in with your questions then and to put them under the Q&A section. And I'm going to pass over to Mark, I think is next on the list. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Uh, I just have a few slides to share here. Okay, good afternoon. Um, how are you doing? I'm teaching the uh, ethical hacking module. So that's in the, in the, in the second year of the master's program. Um, most people, when they think of the word hacking, 
they think of movies and TV shows and you think that you see something like this. So a lot of people in a dark room with several screens and keyboards on the go simultaneously, uh, and they're trying to hack into some, some system. Um, it's not quite as, as cool as the screen might make things look, but uh, it's, 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 a, it's akin to, uh, to, to what you see here to a large degree. Um, in mainstream media, when you hear about hacking, you hear about large data breaches. Uh, you hear about the hacktivist groups like Anonymous, uh, whereby they deface a website or they take down a website. Um, mainstream stream media can make this sound uh, a lot more clever, a lot more difficult than it actually is. So the idea of you know anonymous taking down the FBI's website or something like that, all they're really doing is overloading that server such that when you try and access the FBI website, uh, the server hosting that website doesn't have any more capacity to send you the, the, the files uh, associated with the website. So it looks to you as if it's offline, the headline in on the news becomes anonymous takes down the FBI, which is not quite true. Uh, but nonetheless, the skills and uh, the tools that are used by hacktivist groups or online hacking groups uh, is the same as what's used by, by an ethical hacker. Uh, in terms of the content in the module, um, we will be looking at everything from industry threats. So we're trying to understand uh, exactly what the threats that are out there. Um, so we're kind of learning uh, almost uh, uh, the defensive side a little bit by learning the offensive side. Um, so we need to know how to measure risk. Uh, so some things are more important than others. Uh, and we're going to learn the real techniques that are used by, by hackers, black hat hackers, uh, like SQL injection, cross-site scripting attacks, cross-site request forgery, broken authentication, broken authorization, bad crypto. And then we have a, a kind of an open uh, a week or two at the end of the module whereby we'll be looking at current trends. So it's kind of, uh, it's a little bit open as in it's whatever is important at the time that we come around to talk about it. Uh, but some things that we might be talking about are like password cracking or wireless hacking, uh, et cetera. In terms of the assessment, uh, this module is 100% continuous assessment. Uh, so there's, there's no final exam. Uh, so we'll start off with a, with a case study. Uh, there are two then multiple choice quizzes throughout the, the semester. Uh, these multiple choice quizzes are included in the module because this is the same as what's done by uh, the industry certification bodies. So like, uh, uh, you know, the, the certified ethical hacker or the CompTIA pen test or uh, the penetration testing certifications, they're done using multiple choice quizzes. So this is to try and emulate that as best as, as possible. And then there's a final report. Um, the work done as part of this, uh, this module will be an individual report. So everyone's going to have a different report. Uh, are you going to be doing different things as, as part of that report? And again, this is this is mapped to kind of what's expected of an ethical hacker in, in the real world, so to speak, whereby you will be hired by a company to, to assess their vulnerabilities. You would have to write up that report. You have to explain to you know the, 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 the management team of that company exactly what the issues are, how severe they are, what are the repercussions of them, and, and indeed how you might go on to, to fix them. In terms of just a, a quick taster of the, the process, Ethical hacking is a, is a business whereby organizations will hire an, an ethical hacker or a, or a hacking team, um, whereby they employ them to test their system. So can they break into their system? Uh, the tools and techniques that they use are exactly the same as what's used by uh, malicious hackers. Um, so they, they emulate exactly what a real attacker would do. The only real difference is that an ethical hacker will document the process. Um, they will assess the severity of those vulnerabilities, exactly what that means. So if we're able to gain access to this system, what can we then, then do? What, can we, what data can we gain access to? Um, so really, the ethical hacking process is not really much different to uh, you know, an unethical hacker. Um, the only thing that they really do differently is they don't really document their process, right? Um, so in terms of the tools and techniques that, that we will uh, we'll cover on the module, as I say, they're real world, these are, these are tools that are actually used. So obviously we have to look at the ethical side as well. So uh, everything we do, we have authorization to do so. Um, you know, we, we don't do anything malicious as part of the module. Certainly we don't do anything malicious when we're connected to UCD's, uh, UCD's network. That's one thing for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's designed to, to, to emulate the real world as, as much imposs as possible. Um, if you have any questions, we have, we have time at the, at the end of the session for, for those questions. And that's all for me, and I'm going to hand over to uh, to, to Associate Professor T.J. McIntyre from the School of Law. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, so the um, topic that I'm going to cover is cybersecurity law and regulation, and this is going to be quite different in some ways from a lot of the other modules because the focus is going to be on 
um, the legal framework um, which surrounds um, your activities in this area. And the idea here is to give you an overview of a number of different things. First of all, what are the laws that actually govern cybersecurity? So what are the laws that specify the security obligations that um, companies have, for example? And most of you are going to be familiar already with things like the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. Um, you might be aware that there's um, quite a bit of sector specific law on top of that in areas such as the e-privacy directive, for example, which regulates telecoms or the uh, Network and Information Security Directive, which regulates certain um, essential services which are fundamental to society. And the idea behind that part of the course is that you get a sense for the legal obligations that are imposed and the cybersecurity standards that are imposed in particular industries. We then look a little bit at some of the issues around cybercrime from two dimensions. One is to be aware of what cybercrime is, the legal responses to it, um, another is to ensure that you don't trip up um, yourself and fall into the trap of doing something which might itself constitute a crime unwittingly. Um, we look then as well at responding to security incidents, the kinds of issues that arise, um, the kinds of forensic issues that arise, for example, in the sense of how we retain data in such a way that it's admissible in any subsequent court proceedings. And then we also talk a little bit about the kind of um, civil law obligations that can arise if you're involved in a security incident. For example, when can companies be liable to their users for damages caused by data breaches? Um, what kinds of issues arise in the context of insurance in relation to data breaches? What are the breach notification obligations that apply in respect of data protection breaches, but also um, under, for example, the Network and Information Security Directive. If you operate an essential service and your service is compromised, who do you have to tell? What do you have to do? So really then we're looking at the overall framework for cyber security from the very general, what are the overall obligations to the more specific and practical, what may you individually have to do or what you should be aware of um, in particular situations. And the assessment then is going to be slightly different from the other modules. We're going to have um, two assignments, and those assignments are going to focus, again, largely on the more practical side of this, so showing that you're aware of the legal obligations that apply in particular um, factual situations. And really, I think that's about it in terms of what I want to say about the module, and um, I'm happy to take questions at the end. Thank you, TJ. Um... I'm just going to spend now a few words to uh, talk about the Secure Software Engineering module, uh, which I will be teaching for the diploma and the master. So this, this is tar targeting students who intend to uh, undertake a career as a security engineer. And it's a complementary module to ethical hacking. So the idea is that we want to encourage students to work in groups uh, towards breaking, fixing, and building secure software systems and particularly web applications. And uh, to do that, students will uh, construct their knowledge through problem solving uh, as part of a team. Uh, another aspect of the module is to promote critical reflection on recent security breaches and vulnerabilities. So what are the content of the module? We will first uh, have a, a short introduction to web application development because not everyone is familiar with that. And then we will cover uh, the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities, which now since 2021 also include um, security design flaws. And we will do a bit of security testing. Uh, and we will also uh, focus also on the secure development life cycle using the Microsoft secure development life cycle and the OWASP security verification standards and the secure, uh, security development life cycle assessment. Uh, we will also, in, in a small part of the module, we will also focus on in the last part of the module, we will focus on framing uh, security requirements, for example, using uh, abuse cases. Um, a, in terms of assignment, this module has a continuous, assess uh, continuous assessment. Uh, there will be an individual continuous assessment uh, where students are required to uh, build a journaling, uh, do journaling activities to reflect on uh, 
existing vulnerabilities and how to fix them. And then we also, there will be group assignment where students first in a group are required to implement a small web application. Then students are required to, in group to um, break the web application implemented by a different group. And finally, the students will be required to fix the vulnerabilities that were identified in their web application. Uh, this module also, at the, towards the end of the module, we will do a capture the flag exercise, so we, which is aimed to uh, identify certain vulnerabilities in a, a third party web application. Okay, so I will now uh, end over to Rupert. Thank you very much. And we will be happy to answer your questions uh, at the end of the session. Okay, so um, thanks very much. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a slide up here with contact details for people that you can contact. Um, that are, hopefully you can see that. Um, there's myself for general inquiries, Rupert Bowen, and my colleague Imelda Huggins, who is the postgraduate program office manager. Uh, any questions related to the application process? And Liliana, I think probably best for the course content. Okay, so I don't know, can the panel see the questions that have come through? Mostly they've all come through in the, um, in the, in the chat, uh, but there's, uh, there's several which are kind of to do with the prerequisites, um, prior learning, which I think we covered largely. Um, one question particularly, um, someone who doesn't have any experience of, of security or the network side, but does have a bachelor's in computer science from UCD. They should be fine, Robert. Okay. Uh, is full remote delivery possible for someone who doesn't or can't come to Ireland? Um, yeah, so I, I can answer this question, Rupert. Uh, so, so ideally, uh, we expect students to be on campus for the three uh, days workshops that will take place during each term. However, we will try the best you know, the best thing possible to accommodate students who cannot uh, or are not able to travel to Dublin for different reasons. However, we can guarantee that students who attend the face-to-face uh, -face workshop remotely will uh, have the same experience of students who uh, attend in person. So this is something that we cannot guarantee. So uh, although we will try our best to accommodate those cases, uh, we won't guarantee the same experience for students who attend the workshop remotely. Okay, there's one more sort of sub related question. Will we be offering a full-time one-year option for this course? Uh, not at the moment. We, we hope uh, in a few years time, we will be able to do that. Okay. Does it include preparation for certificates like CISP? So, sorry, I, I, I didn't... Uh, could you so does, it, does it include uh, certificates or preparation for, for industry certificates like CISP? No, no, no it does no. not include that. Um, there was a couple of questions then. Will, on the, will the OWASP top 10 be included as part of ethical hacking? Yeah, it will indeed. So the, the content is... is uh, very much informed by the OWASP top 10 and it'll be referenced several times throughout the module, yeah. A couple of questions related to international students. I don't know, Melda, would you like to answer those? Um, there's um, sure. scholarships. Um, yeah. I see one there in relation to international students being eligible for a student visa. So because the, the master's is currently part-time, students enrolled on this master's will not be eligible for a student visa. Um, therefore coming to Dublin would be on a on a holiday visa essentially and um, so it's only full-time students are eligible for a student visa and um, in relation to scholarships I don't know if anything has been set Liliana have you any knowledge of this I, I actually I I, I I don't have a specific a precise answer to this question I need to I need to double check so I, I can provide a, a specific answer but I'll, I'll, I'll take a note of it. Okay. Okay, here's somebody who has a bachelor in computer science from 20 years ago, uh, but has been working in law enforcement 
and looking to move into cyber security. So I think as Liliana pointed out, we'll be looking at each yeah. application on an individual on a case by case basis, Rupert. So yeah. Um, because I think many people will have complex backgrounds and that, and we, we could spend the rest of the afternoon discussing yeah. individual cases. So yeah. um, if the person applies or, or or if they want to send us um, a, a detailed CV, then we'd be in a position to advise yeah. them. Exactly. I, I think we covered the workload. How many hours per week does a course take up? I mean, typically a, a 10 credit module is around 200 to 220 overall hours, hours of overall effort. So factor in, you know, a certificate is 30 credits, diploma is 60, master's is 90. You know, you're looking, if you're doing a master's over two years, you're probably looking at 15 to 20 hours a week of overall study commitment. Okay, I'm looking through. So here's an interesting question. What's the benefit of the course if I'm already working in cybersecurity? Would security certifications be sufficient in this case, or why should we go for the masters? I mean, that's a very good question. Um, first of all, uh, a, the, the expertise that you acquire in, in the workplace may not cover all aspects of security. And this master is aimed to give a com more comprehensive uh, knowledge of different security aspects from you know, information security to, to cybersecurity laws, to incident management, to uh, uh, secure uh, web application development, to ethical hacking and, and network security. So, and also uh, this uh, master offered the possibility to undertake a relevant research project, which is something that um, uh, practitioners do not always have the chance to do uh, in, in a company. So I'm not sure if anyone else wants to add something. It's it's worth note, noting, Liliana, as well, that a master's doesn't expire. You don't have to go back and re, uh, recertify every two or three years. So, I mean, you know, that, that's one, one benefit that I would see of, of, a, of a university level education versus a professional certification as well. There's a question here about whether the assessment is in real time. So the quizzes and group discussions, uh, are they happening at a set time, uh, in office hours, outside office hours, because this person may be working full time shift work, etc. Uh, I, I guess it depends on the module. Uh, certain module will, uh, for example, require you to do the quizzes in a specific, when you start the quizzes, you are required to complete it within a specific time uh, because, um, so, so I, I guess uh, it, it depends. So there will be group discussion uh, during the live activities every week. So this is going to happen live, but there will also be group discussion arranged during the face-to-face -face workshops. So, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this can, can, can vary. Our objective is that, um, so the face-to-face -face workshop will take place on Fridays uh, from 10 to four. Uh, uh, and the, um, the live activity will take place online outside the, the core working hours. So to facilitate part-time learners. Okay, so there's a question here about the research track in the second year. So if someone opts to do a research project instead of the case study, how do they decide the subject of their research? So the, the research project, uh, um, there are different ways to, to undertake a research project. Generally what happens is that the research project is proposed by a, a, an academic staff in UCD who is doing research in cybersecurity and will discuss the research project with the students. But there are cases in which the students wants to propose a research project, and we are open also to accommodate those re requests. Uh, so so it, it can work both, both ways. Uh, one more here, how are assessments graded? Is there a minimum standard to be achieved? Uh, well, it, it will be the same as uh, the UCD standard. I, I believe that the minimum to pass a, a module is 40%. So that's, that's the same as it is applied in UCD. So it's 
So 40% or I guess that corresponds to a D minus grade uh, is the minimum to pass a module. Okay, I, I think we've covered most of the questions. Uh, there's one, one more coming in there. Um, yeah. So I think it was a related question to the um, to the working hours. Um, okay. We covered that, I think. Yeah, I mean, we don't cover shift, shift workers. Like, uh, I mean, uh, it, it, it's very hard to uh, find a time that can work for everyone. But one thing that we can definitely we can um, do is to uh, pre-record to record those live session so that people who don't have the the option to attend them can still have a look at them uh, in their own time. So that's something we can definitely do. But uh, yeah, so so core working hours we refer to uh, nine to five. Okay, one question here, maybe Imelda, you might look at this one. Do you see that one at the end? Um, do students from this degree get the same help from UCD careers as full-time on-campus students? Can they participate in job fairs and so on? Um, well, every student in UCD is entitled to um, get help from the UCD career service. In relation to placement for job fairs, I would imagine if you're here and there's some there's an event on, absolutely. Um, but for students who are not here, I think the best thing would be to be in contact with the UCD careers office. They have plenty of staff there who will be able to advise students on, on, on what they're entitled to apply for and, and will help out in any way they can. I recognise some of the names on the attendee list, so they'd be familiar with UCD, but for those who are not, there's a very large 300 acre campus. We have uh, wonderful facilities. There's a huge library, uh, great sports facilities. And as a student of this course, you'd be entitled to use those the same as any other student. Okay, one so- uh, the, Sorry, Rupert, just one thing to add there is that actually UC Library is also, um, they make available ebook copies of any core reading textbooks that are needed on 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 the on the course. So, in addition to having the physical copies in the library that you are entitled to come in and take out if you wish, there's also uh, ebooks made available that you can read on your iPad or your Kindle or whatever you want, uh, or just on your your laptop. You don't have to have a, a specific device, um, which is very handy, especially in a, in a remote learning context. Have I missed any questions or anything in the chat? Otherwise, I think we'll wrap there are up. Some more, I think, in the Q&A session, okay. there's one for Mark um, about. Oh, yeah. Mark. Yeah, I see that. So will there be hands-on workshops for ethical hacking? Uh, yeah, so for each of the, uh, for, for the ethical hacking module, there will be uh, hands-on workshops uh, for three, uh, three times per semester, so for about two hours each. Um, so there'll be weekly exercises that we'll be doing. Um, and that will be supported online with, uh, you know, uh, forum-led questions and answers. Um, and then we will we'll have some hands-on workshops three times throughout the semester. So in terms of the ethical hacking module, it's quite, it is quite practical and hands-on. You know, we have, um, we have deliberately vulnerable applications for you to, to, to poke at and to see what, what's wrong. Um, so uh, it, it, it's, you know, again, it's emulating what you would do as part of the real world of being an ethical hacker. Um, so the hands-on bit is very important. And even in terms of writing that final report that I mentioned, uh, it's a final report on your practical work, right? So, you, you know, you, you can't just write the report without having the technical sort of know-how or demonstrate the technical know-how as part of it. There is one question I just noticed here. So there's actually two related to this. The assessments and exams are the open book or will they be relying on memorizing or another question another person asked are they proctored and it will depend each module lecturer will will ass, will assess the module and and have a different form of assessment. so there's no single answer to, to that um rupert so some people do you open book exams uh, and and some don't so it, it depends on the individual lecturer okay. i think liliana they won't have to physically attend did we agree that and yeah, yeah. So, so they don't. They are not obliged to physically attend. So, in my case, for example, going back to the previous question, my module does not require memorizing, but it requires more to apply to reflect on the knowledge acquired in the in in the module. So, and I I believe that most of the modules 
won't require to do exams that, that require memorizing, or at least only part of the module will require the type of assessment. Um, actually, there was also a question before that one. Uh, one question is, do you have some example of research subject you could cover? So uh, the research subject, uh, if the student does not suggest one, can be uh, are highly depend on the research interest of each member of staff. For example, I do research on uh, ransomware detection using machine learning. Another aspect of my research is related to uh, explainability uh, of machine learning for security, especially intrusion detection systems. Um, another aspect of the research I'm working on is on how to um, identify and detect uh, uh, threats that were previously unknown or anticipated, uh, again, using machine learning techniques. So this could be example of research topics, but you know, other members of staff are doing, for example, research in cryptography, network security. Uh, so this, this depends on the, um, so the, there is a lot of expertise in the School of Computer Science, in the School of Law, in UCD. Uh, so so there is, we can cover a variety of, of different uh, advanced topics. Okay, uh, one last question. Is there any machine learning for threats as part of the course? No, I think. So this, is, um, this can be part of the research trends. So we have a module that, that refers to research trends in cybersecurity. And definitely one aspect uh, we will cover is, is the topic. But this is only in the second year. And if students decide to take uh, uh, the uh, case study track. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, that's it for today. I just wanted to thank our speakers, particularly Liliana, Joe, TJ, Mark, and Imelda, uh, for coming along, and thank you, attendees, for attending. And you should be able to see the email addresses to write to there if you've got any questions. Please don't hesitate to ask. We're here, um, and we hope to see you on the course in September. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Robert.